Happy Thursday, Houdat Nation. We got a lot to discuss. And if you're going to hate on me for wearing my Arkansas colors, I don't know what to tell you. Click out the video. Hogs are playing in the uh, Sweet 16. I'm going to support my team. But let's talk about trading for DeForest Buckner because there's a rumor out there from, I'm not going to say a good NFL source. I'm going to say a pretty joking one. Uh, NFL Rooms on Twitter said, DeForest Buckner wants to play for a contender and could be traded. And so I just wanted to talk about the rumor and I wanted to react to it. So Cameron Jordan, he, tweet, he quote tweeted the, the quote unquote report and said, whoa, is that right at Saints? What I'll say is DeForest Buckner took to Twitter. Like, I'm just going to say this off the rip. He, he took to Twitter and said, check your sources at NFL Rooms. So, I, it's that report report not necessarily true I don't think but the rumor is certainly worth discussing because maybe the trade could happen maybe DeForest Buckner could fill an obvious need for the New Orleans Saints and when you take a look at his last four years last year let's focus in on this 74 tackles eight sacks 11 tackles for loss and two forced fumbles I mean he has six forced fumbles over the last four years he has let's nine and a half. I mean, he, ha he has, like, 20-plus sacks. I went to Arkansas again, guys. Don't blame me. He went to, like, 20-plus sacks in the last four years. If that number is wrong, this is a YouTube channel. You can get a calculator out. But I feel like it could actually make sense in the sense of he's a fit. He would fit in well. And this is the depth chart how it would look if the Saints were to make this trade happen. And I'm not going to lie. I kind of love it. I, I really love it. Colin, or Kalen Saunders, DeForest Buckner holding it down on the defensive interior. Then you have Carl Granderson, Cam Jordan on the defensive ends. You know, you got Ta Tana Passanio, Peyton Turner as well to rotate through. But the, I think that this depth chart actually is very, very appealing. You obviously move Shepard down one spot because he was the saint that, or he was the free agent that they just signed recently. Um, but my idea in general, I again, I the, the trade I don't think is necessarily like likely to happen, but it doesn't mean that it can't happen. My idea is trade for DeForest Buckner and then address the defensive line in the draft. And that pretty much completes the defensive line. I don't think you need to, if you make a trade for DeForest Buckner, then you don't really have to worry about going and adding a bunch of extra defensive line talent. I think you can look at Buckner or even look at Yannick Ngakwe. I think that that's a fit that would be amazing for the Saints. It fits a very obvious edge rushing need. Whereas DeForest Buckner, he fills a very obvious defensive tackle need. So point being, go get one of these veteran uh, defensive linemen and then address it as well. Get one more guy in the draft. And I think the defensive line's good. I, I really do. It's a, it's a good line. There's a lot of talented players on it. And at the end of the day, I want my team to win games, and I think this is how you do it. So let me know in the comment section, who that Nation, do you want the Saints to trade for DeForest Buckner? It's unlikely, but that doesn't mean it can't happen. If you do, go down in the comment section and type trade. Now, this will be the pinned comment on today's video. So if you get hit with the YouTube ad break, don't click out of the video. Just scroll down, answer the question, scroll back up, and by the time that you get back up here, the video will be playing again. All right, so let's talk about Alvin Kamara and his legal situation. There's some updates to talk about. There's some updates coming in from his attorneys and from his, uh, his legal team. But before we get to that, we are in the midst of an excruciating sub battle. My guy Matthew Peterson over at the Broncos Breakdown. This week alone, they've picked up 170 subs. Here at Saints Now, shout out to all 168 of y'all who have subscribed this week. And shout out to all like four or 500 who've subscribed in the last like two weeks. It's been awesome seeing the growth here on the channel. And shout out to my guy Nick Roloff who is in charge of our Falcons channel. 167 subs. We're barely beating the Falcons. And as we know, we're in a sub battle with the Broncos breakdown trying to beat them to 15,000 subs. They're a little bit ahead of us, about 60, 70 subs on top. Come on. Let's make this happen. Let's lock it in. Let's show them what the Houdat Nation's all about and that we're the best fan base in the world. Go down and subscribe for Saints News and Rumors. So David Charns, he's been tweeting, updating, providing information all around this case ever since kind of really happened. So this is the most uh, recent update from Charns. He said, attorneys for New Orleans Saints running back Alvin Kamara says the victim in a 2022 nightclub beating grabbed a woman's hand before the altercation at a Las Vegas nightclub 
documents say. So let's take a look at the le another part of the legal update. This is coming from the article that Charns tweeted out, you know, laying out everything that's going on, really. Kamara's attorneys made the claim in a petition filed Monday, which asks a judge to drop the conspiracy to commit battery charge against their client. Kamara's attorney, David Chesnoff, previously told the eight News Now investigators that the beating was self-defense. And so, as we know, the victim filed a lawsuit in Louisiana, and he's asking for $10 million in damages. And what I'll say before we get to the next update, if this was a thing about defending a woman, I'm not going to weigh in and say whether or not I think that was the case or not, but I will always say if it's defending a woman, especially someone that you, you know you love, it's a close person, friend, family, girlfriend, whatever it is, I hate to say it, but at the end of the day, I'm always going to be there to defend those people that are important to me, and I'm not going to sit here and say that that's what I think, 100% or 100 not percent what happened, but my opinion is if you see a woman in distress, you should probably go help them out. But Kamara's attorney also did add this. We are looking forward to the trial, and we are looking forward to full vindication, meaning I think the, 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 team th the legal team thinks that this is going to be an easy trial for the Kamara. This is going to be very quick and very – Pro unproblematic in terms of clearing Kamara's name because they believe that this is going to lead to a full vindication. They're, I believe that it seems like they're really banking on the self-defense and defending a woman aspect of this argument, and that's what they're going to be arguing. Here's what Alvin Kamara's attorney had to say on that part of the incident. The female quickly pulls her hand away from Mr. Green, who is the victim of the of the altercation from Alvin Kamara and the other guys involved. Kamara's, uh, or Mr. Green from Kamara's, this unwanted physical touching, also known as battery, was noticed by one of the individuals within Kamara's group. As Mr. Green's unwanted physical touching was rebuked, Mr. Green proceeded to follow the female who was attempting to el enter the elevator, and that's where the... I put my arm out to not let him on the elevator thing. That's where that whole situation kind of picks up. That's in, in the storyline or in the timeline of it, I guess you could call it. That's kind of how that panned out, according to Kamara's uh, attorneys. There is a hearing for the petitions on April 4th, so we'll have updates around then. And then the trial for Alvin Kamara is set for July 31st, so we will also be having updates around then. But Houdat Nation, fill in the blank for me. Alvin Kamara will be suspended blank games next season. So if you think he gets zero, if you think this is self-defense, he was doing something to protect somebody he loves – let me know. Like, say zero, zero games, one, two, three, whatever you think it is. But if you think it's four, five, or six, also let me know in the comment section. I'll be interacting with all of y'all in the comment section. So please share your thoughts and fill in the blank for me. Now let's turn our focus to the NFL draft. Could the Saints be looking to draft a wide receiver in the first round? And now I know I said earlier, go address defensive line in the draft, and you can also add another veteran, but... Here is how the current wide receiver depth chart pans out. Now, Jackson Smith and Jigba and Zay Flowers are going to be meeting with the Saints. And this is a wide receiver depth chart that's good, not great, I will say. You have Michael Thomas. When he's healthy, he's dominant. He's elite. He's a phenomenal football player. You have Chris Olave. That's my guy. We all know how good he is, how good he can be. He's also looking to – he's trying to add some weight, trying to get a little bit more muscular, a little bit bigger to be able to bring down some more contested catches. Rashid Shahid, the speedster, love that kid. Been loving that kid since we signed him as a UDFA out of Weaver State. Now, Traquan Smith, I'm not necessarily in love with the idea of having Traquan Smith get regular reps as, you know, one of your top four wide receivers. But what I will say is when you, if you bring in one of these two guys – in Zay Flowers or Jackson Smith and Jigba, I think that they could totally fill in. And so I wanted to put a comparison of JSN and Chris Olave from their uh, – Chris Olave's final year at Ohio State in 2021 and JSN's most productive year as last year. He missed time due to injury, missed a substantial amount of time actually due to injury. So we wanted to hone in on these stats. So when you compare JSN to Chris Olave, 95 receptions to 65 – 1,606 yards to 936. S almost 17 yards per catch compared to 14 and a half, just under that. Nine touchdowns to compared to Olave's 13. And then you have uh, JSN's 75 yards to or for a long to Chris Olave's 61 yards. And why I bring this up, look at this. 
look at look how fun. Look how happy they look. Look how excited they look. I mean, come on. You, you're telling me you wouldn't want this dynamic duo in New Orleans? And as we all know, the Saints have a du- are a direct pipeline from Ohio State for NFL talent. I mean, they're bringing in NFL talent. I think the stat is over the last seven drafts, they've had five Ohio State players in the first and second in the first or second round get taken. So kind of wild, if you ask me. It's kind of crazy. And also. I think that if the Saints were as excited and as eager to move up in the draft to go get Chris Olave, what I'll say is I'm not expecting them to go and move up to go go and draft Jackson Smith and Jigba. But what I will say is JSN put up really good production, and they managed to move up for Chris Olave in that same year. You're telling me it's impossible? I don't know. But let's talk about Zay Flowers because this kid is also one talented cat. He was a number one wide receiver and the number 16 overall player on Mel Kuyper's big board. And what I'll say is we all know that Mel Kuyper's, you know, he's old. He's a boomer. Kind of has some bad takes here and there. But he is very well respected. And at the end of the day, he he knows talent. He sees talent. I just don't think his mock drafts are necessarily all that accurate. But... He is a two-time first-team All-SEC player in 2022. And then he also set Boston College's single-season receiving record in 2022 with 12 touchdowns. And on top of those 12 touchdowns, the kid had 78 receptions for 1,077 yards for just under 14 yards per catch. That's quality talent. That's production. And that's impressive, if you've asked me. So put yourself in the war room for the Saints draft. Which one are you picking? I'm not saying that these are the two guys that they're going to definitely pick between. But if you had to pick one of these two, type ZF for Zay Flowers, type JSN for Jackson Smith and Jigba. Guys, I appreciate every single one of y'all for hanging out with us today. Please don't forget to subscribe. Hit the thumbs up icon and like today's video. And at the and also, y'all stay golden. It's been an honor. It's been a pleasure. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Y'all stay golden. Peace.